today is the mountaintop of Stoic. Go ahead and uh, give me your attention up here. So after today, there won't really be any new content in um, Unit 7. There will just be practice from here on out, okay? So you can go ahead and get turned to this page. So, and we're looking at this guy here. I'm going to mix vinegar and baking soda. So this guy's vinegar, acetic acid, the HC2, H3O2. And sodium bicarbonate is also baking soda. So here's what I'm going to do. I have these three flasks up here. And if you're watching a recording of this video, you won't be able to see these flasks, but we'll try and draw pictures to get you caught up. Um, so in each one of these flasks, there are 190 milliliters of vinegar. So that's not different. You have the exact same amount of vinegar in all three. But I have 8 grams of baking soda in here. 16 grams of baking soda in here, and then I doubled it once more to have 32 baking uh, grams of baking soda in the third flask on your right. Now, um, I have the baking soda in balloons because when I mix them, I want to trap the gas that is made. So when you do this reaction, you'll make CO2 gas. I want to trap that in a balloon basically so I can see how much gas is being made relative, uh, relatively in each flask, okay? So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go ahead Spend just like 30 seconds or so, and go ahead and rank how big each balloon size will be based on your prediction. So just guess like, oh, I think the first one will be the smallest, and then it'll get bigger from there, or vice versa, or some sort of mix. So just go ahead and predict. Best guess, you can discuss with the person next to you what's going to happen to the size of the balloons. Let's hear some of the guesses around the room. Um, Andrew, what did you say? Okay, so the first one you guys are going to see on the left is going to be the smallest balloon, and it's going to get bigger from there. Did anyone say anything different than that? Yeah? Yeah, I said uh, medium, small, large. Medium, small, large. Okay, so you're mixing it up, so it's going to be like the middle one, then it's going to get smaller, then you're going to have a huge one at the end. Okay, Lexi? I said medium, big, and then the last one's going to be small. I don't, I don't know why. Okay, all right. So people are like, I don't trust Mr. Pelcher, this is probably some sort of trick. Yes. So it's going to do something that doesn't make any sense? Correct. Any other guesses? Yeah? I said all three of them will be small. All three of them will so be think, small. You think they'll all be the same size? Is that what you're saying? Ooh, interesting. Okay. Which is small. All right. Small. Um, well, I'll say that the correct answer is a combination of some of the things I just heard. We'll leave it at that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix these, and once we mix them, we'll draw what we see. So here it goes. I'm going to go ahead and mix the smallest one right here, the 8 grams of baking soda. Always makes me nervous that the balloon's going to pop or pop off of here or something. There we go. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, just keep doing your thing. Let's see, all right, so we're mixing that baking soda. We see a lot of carbon dioxide forming, lots of bubbles. Still going. Got lots of bubbles. Just right. Just right. Just right. drinking porridge or drinking eating porridge or whatever. The bears. What? Goldilocks. 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 Right. Okay. So I don't know how, about how big you say that is. Um, Small. Well, it depends on what the other ones look like. Right. So you know, for those of you watching at home, it looks like uh, like I don't know, like a melon. About the size of a melon, I guess. <laughs> Not watermelon, like a like a regular melon. Yeah, thank you. One person's like specifically, I think it looks like a honeydew. So maybe you draw something like this. So I saw something like that for my first one. All righty. Now here's where we start getting the moment of truth, where some guesses get eliminated and others may still be in contention. All right, here we go. So here comes 16 grams. We've doubled the baking soda. What will happen to the size of the balloon? Okay. Here we go. We're mixing quite a bit. A lot of bubbles. We're almost to that melon size. Oh, wow. Oh, we're still cooking. Stop cooking. <laughs> no more cooking. Shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's medium. That's medium. It's like the same size. Yeah, it's the same here. No. 
Definitely not the same. Yeah, it's I can't see from what sitting All right, to me, it's definitely big. It looks like it's about twice as big. It's not a cantaloupe. It's about twice as big. So. Yeah, I don't think it is. Oh, it is. I'll go argue that. It's about twice as big. So the second one's about like that. So out of the moment of truth, what's going to happen to this third one? Okay. <laughs> It just somehow bursts in flames. You're like, what? <laughs> All right, now we've doubled the amount of baking soda again. We got 32 grams in here. What is it? Uh, I really hope that doesn't pop. That, I'm always nervous about that. Yo, y'all need to stop with this. <laughs> no. You know what? I'll... I'm just trying to kill him. That's what I'm saying. Let's see here. Looks like we're kind of running out of bubbles there. Got a little bit. Yo, did I just call it or what? Oh. No. So that looks like it's about the same as the second one. You did do it not too early. That one's like yeah, really said I called it. There's no more. There's not really any bubbles left. So that's kind of the end of that. Yeah, it's about I said it's about the, the same. same. I think that one's the biggest. Dude, I'm yeah, sure drink yeah. it. Um, it wouldn't taste great. Uh, but yeah, so that third one is basically the same as the second one. So it did double in size from the second one, but then the third one we doubled the baking soda and just didn't really do anything different. Weird. So this is the heart and soul of limiting excess stoic. By the end of the period today, I'm hoping that you should be able to explain this I don't want to using chemistry. Yeah, I, feel like <laughs> I don't want to. What makes you think I want to? Flip to the back of that page. Let's talk about bikes, baby. Let's talk about bikes. And here's rule number one. The limiting reactant controls the stoichiometry. The limiting reactant controls the stoichiometry. Mr. Pilcher, I don't really know what you mean by limiting reactant. Let me show you. Okay? So, when we balance, quote unquote, balance this chemical equation of bikes, we know that there is one frame for two wheels to make one bike, right? So, this is a balanced chemical equation. So, if I have, let's say, 10 frames and 20 wheels, how many bikes am I going to make? Ten. You got it. And this situation is what I would call oh, I get it. perfect stoic. You got a guess? So like, if you have ten frames and thirty wheels, you can still only make ten bikes. Oh. So maybe there is only a certain like bigness of a balloon to make you have to, you have to create a certain amount of vinegar. Oh, vinegar too. So we are on the right we are on the right track over there. We're on the right track. So this is perfectly balanced. We have the exact number of wheels to go with the exact number of frames to make the bike. So even though John is kind of right, no, so is all right. Because he's just wrong. What about if we had ten frames and ten wheels? How many bikes are we going to make now? Five. Five. Ten. Five. Five. Have you never ten. ridden a bike? Ten. Ten. Okay. Ten. 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 You guys. All right, guys. Let's let's just do the math. Let's just do the math. Ten. 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 Okay. If I'm going from frames to bikes, we're all, if I'm going from frames to bikes. That's a one to one ratio. Go. So ten, 10 times one is ten, right? That's Oh wait, wait. Wait a second. But if I go from Wheels to bikes, that's a two to one. So you gotta divide by two. So that would say five. But the first line of math would say ten. So which one is right? Five. Five. What? That's that's where we're going here. You talk about unicycles back there. Make unicycles. So here's the idea: we have enough frames for ten bikes. 
We only have enough wheels for five bikes, so which one's going to happen? It's always the lower amount. You can only make five bikes. And you'll run out of wheels. You'll have five frames just like sitting there, but you won't have any wheels to put on them. <laughs> Notice this. Even if, what if I said this? Like, all right, fine, I'll get more wheels. I got 10 frames and 16 wheels now. Eight. Oh, wait, I only get eight bikes. So even now in this third line, we have more wheels than bike, bike frames. We have more wheels than frames. The wheels still hold us back, don't they? The vinegar is holding us back. It depends on which one you're looking at. I'll come back to you towards the end. I'll have you explain it. We'll see how you can do. All right. So in this, here's a new little label you guys will see that I expect you to do on your quizzes and tests. In this particular, this first line is perfect stoic. But then this one, the wheels held us back. So we're going to put a big old LR next to that. It stands for limiting reactant. And right here, we are also held back by wheels, so we call that the limiting reactant again. So, Mr. Coach, I have a question. Yeah. So, from now on, are you going to put those numbers down so that we have a limiting reactant? Like, you know, talk about how we balance it and we automatically assume that everything is going to be equal. So, how, yes. so we have perfect stoic. Are you going to change that? So, we're pulling back the covers. Yeah, so this whole time, we've been pretending that everything was perfect stoic. But now, you can no longer make that assumption. That's exactly where we're going with this. Wow. Now, in terms of the skills you need to do this kind of stoic, you already had them before you walked in today. But it has to take a little bit more work and a little more understanding, deeper understanding. Okay. So we have this problem. What's the maximum mass? Blah, 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 blah. Before I even get to all that, no that noise, what are a couple of things I should totally do before I do any calculations? I should balance, and I should probably... Fix those milliliters. I'll go ahead and take care of those two things. So future you doesn't have any chance to accidentally make a mistake in your calculations. Fix your milliliters. Take care of your balancing. So I'll give you guys about 60 seconds. Go ahead and take care of that for me. So if I were to fix this guy, I'd be coming in hot with the two right here. Because I'm like, oh, I need more chlorines on the left. Uh, but that gives up my potassium. So i got to put some more over here. And you'll find that that fixes your problems. You also find, yeah, 600 milliliters? No, thank you. 0.6 liters. Sure. Okay. And now we're ready to play. Now we're ready to play. Now, which one's more? Uh, the 600 or the 0.6 liters of silver nitrate or the 37 grams of potassium chloride? Like, I, I don't know. That's orange and apples. Um, what we need to do is we need to get both of our reactants into the exact same units, and then it'll be super easy to compare them. What's more, wheels or bikes? Like, or wheels or frames? Like, I don't know. Why don't we just find out how many bikes both can make, and that'll be really easy to tell. Okay? So we're going to get both of our reactants into the moles of the product, and then it'll be easy to compare. So, it um, doesn't matter which reactant you pick first. I usually just pick the one that was written first. So in this case, that'll be silver nitrate. So I'm going to find my moles of silver nitrate. Okay? I'm going to find my moles of silver nitrate. Um, it's a solution. So that will be the molarity times the volume in liters. So in this case, that's going to be my 0 0.5 times 0 0.6. Molarity times volume. And so I will find that um, I have 0.3 moles of silver nitrate. Okay. Now silver nitrate to silver chloride. That's a clean old one-to-one. -one. So that means I can make uh, up to 3 moles of silver chloride. I have enough silver nitrate to make 0.3 moles of silver chloride. Cool. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my other reactant. So maybe I'm dealing with my wheels now or whatever. So I got KCl, moles of KCl. KCl is a pure substance, which is sort of indicated by the fact that it's 37 grams. We're given a mass. So I want to do the mass or the formula weight. What is the formula weight for KCl, somebody? Potassium and chlorine. 74. Yep. Got 74 because potassium is 39, chlorine is 35. 79, or 39 plus 35 is 74. So if you plug that in, I've got that many moles of KCl. And you'll notice I have more moles of KCl than silver nitrate. But again, we're not comparing those two numbers. It doesn't matter. We want to get them both to have the exact same units, and then we'll worry about comparison. 
Well, it's a 2 to 1 ratio here. So I have to divide by 2. Very key step. And so I may have enough silver nitrate to make 0.3 moles of silver chloride, but I only have enough moles of potassium chloride to make 0.25 moles of silver chloride. I can't make quite as much silver chloride with my amount of KCL. So we always take the lesser value. Yeah. Yes. What this really means is, and notice my labeling here, I'm going to draw an arrow with a big fat LR pointing right towards that KCL. But like That is my limiting reactant. That is the one I'll run out of. You can say this differently and be like, I have too much silver nitrate. I'm going to have silver nitrate left over. Yep. So is that why there's still baking soda in the bottom of the on that last one? That is exactly what happened. Hey, that's a really good observation. First person saying that all day. I observed it too, by the way. My last, uh, my last Earl Meyer class does have some baking soda left in it because the baking soda, there had too much at the end. But you'll notice the first one, there's no baking soda left in there because I had too much vinegar in the first one. That was really good. Okay. So if I go through my steps here real quick. So the first one is always is balance. I don't even know if you guys really need to write that one down. I'm hoping that you do that one in your sleep. That you know before you do any stoic, you're just like balance. I'm just going to balance it and fix that. After we balanced, we converted all our given stuff to moles. So we found our moles of silver nitrate. We found our moles of potassium chloride. Okay, so we did that. That third step, which in my opinion is the most important, is we need to label the limiting reactant. How do I label the limiting reactant? Well, that's the one that makes the least product. In this case, potassium chloride makes the least product. It only makes 0.25 moles of the silver chloride, whereas silver nitrate made 0.3 moles. So we're going to run out of that KCL. It's going to be all used up. And so what's our last step? Well, I'm kind of done with my math for silver nitrate. I know that I have more than enough. So I'm not really going to deal with any of my math in blue up top. I'm just going to focus on that second line of math, since that's my limiting reactant, and that's what's going to determine how much I can actually make. So this problem told us, hey, I want to know the mass of silver chloride. So, this is moles of silver chloride. I'm almost there, but I need to find the mass of silver chloride. So, moles equals what? If I'm solving for mass? Mass over, mass formula, mass over weight. formula weight. Love it. So, mass over the formula weight of silver chloride, which is what, somebody? A buck 78, yep. If I multiply both sides by 178, I will find that officially I can make up to 44.5 grams of silver chloride. I'm the model student. Here, model student. There goes the box. Um, you think you know everything you don't. He knew everything I was about to say on that last step. Uh, oh. I said that in my yeah, Tron. I hope so. I say it the same way every time. I really want you guys to put boxes or circles around them. And so that's our last step. Use the limiting reactant to proceed with your story. So notice how I didn't proceed with my excess silver nitrate, I only proceeded with my limiting potassium chloride. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Spade. So I don't know how long I said, but... So That's fine. I love do it. Do we ever need to know, like, how much of that excess or uh, whatever is left? That's a great question. It depends on what I'm asking you. In this particular case, I just want to know the maximum amount of silver chloride you could make. So in this case, like, well, I know I got plenty of silver nitrate, so who cares? I could ask you questions, but like, when you mix these two things together, how much silver nitrate is left over? I could ask you that. Um, or something of, of that nature. Or it could be like, which one of these has left over? Or something, and then you have to figure out which one runs out, and then you'd be like, oh, so there's this much of this one left over. There's a lot of angles I could ask about this. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, I did. That one doesn't just continuously click in the same spot. All right, so if we want to come back full circle, 
Back to the vinegar and the baking soda. Okay? Let's see here. John, you want to give this a shot? Explain yeah. to me what happens. In the first in the first glass, what happened? Um, small balloon. It's a small balloon, so we didn't make that much CO2. What did we run out of in the first one? Baking soda. We ran out of baking soda. In the second one, this is basically perfect stoic. Get two sentences. This is perfect stoic in the second one. Not all the way. So then what happened in the third one now? Um, you were limited by the vinegar. I was limited, to, limited by the vinegar. So that's why I didn't get any bigger, because I ran out of vinegar. Yeah. And you know, again, you'll notice, no baking soda left in flask one, lots of baking soda left in flask two. So if you would have put more vinegar in it, would the reaction that? If I poured more vinegar in here, okay. this balloon would get bigger, because there's more carbon dioxide forming, because I have plenty of baking soda to go around. Yep. So would you call the second one just right? Yeah, the second one's just right, and I did those calculations myself. I, I was maybe yeah. say like almost. Yeah, Lexi? Um, medium. Never mind, it was a bad question. Sure you don't want to ask? Yeah. Okay, that's all right. All righty. Let's do one more practice problem as a class from the first problem at the top of the worksheet called limiting excess soy. And then I'll let you guys work independently as I pass back your quizzes from yesterday. Uh, so limiting reactive soy, number one. Okay, first two things you should do before you do any calculations are what? Balance. Balance and Balance. fix your milliliters. Yep. So go ahead and do that for me real quick. Balance and fix your milliliters. I'll give you guys a few seconds. In this particular problem, it just so happens to be balanced, which is nice. And I have a few milliliters to fix. Again, I just like to scribble the whole thing out. I don't even want to have to give my chance. I don't. I don't ever want to have a chance to accidentally use 46.8. You know. No sense in that. Yeah. Alrighty. So, how much barium sulfate can I make? Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to find out how many moles of barium sulfate each one of my reactants can make and go from there. So, step one, I'm going to find the moles of both of my reactants. So, my moles of magnesium sulfate, looks like it's a solution. So, molarity times volume. So, that's the 0.44 times the 0.0375. Boom. Looks like I'm um, coming in hot with 0.017 moles of magnesium sulfate. My KCl, uh, that's also a solution, I guess. Okay, whatever. I'm sorry, my, um, I put KCl. This should be typo. B A C L 2 My apologies. Well, that's going to be um, my molarity times my volume. So that's my 0.1 times 0.0468. So I have that many moles of barium chloride there. I want to make sure I convert them both into the same unit. I don't want to compare these two numbers. Okay, that's apples and oranges. But if I can get them into the same units. So one to one ratio, if I want to get to barium sulfate here, so I can make that many moles of barium sulfate with my magnesium sulfate. This one's also one to one. So I can make 0.0047 moles of barium sulfate with my barium chloride. So who's holding me back? The, no. the barium, barium, barium chloride is the one holding me back. That second row right there. So I'm going to put a big old arrow with an LR next to it. When you're showing me your partial credit and all that good stuff on tests and quizzes, Never hurts to slap a giant LR and something like, Mr. Pilcher, I'm a little confused over here, but I know this one's holding me back. That's what you're telling me there, so I can see that you understand some of what you're doing. Okay, well, we're done with our magnesium sulfate calculations because we got more than enough of that. One second there, John. So I'm going to go ahead and use my barium chloride calculations to find out how much barium sulfate I could actually make at a minimum. So mass over formula weight, in this case that's 233. So if I solve for mass, you get 1.10 grams barium sulfate, and I'm the model student. There goes the box. Yeah, you're really some box student. Oh, question. No, I, I had a different question. Uh-huh. What's that? It's not about that. I mean, I can ask That's you. okay. Go ahead. So, like, 
I think it's just kind of like Spade was saying. Like, will they ever ask us to find, or like, how would, how would it be asked to find, like, what we missed out on? Like, this 0 0.3 minus 0.25, so then you have 0.5. Like, if I ask you how much magnesium sulfate is left over, or something like that? Yeah, would you do, for this last one, or would you do 0.5 over 178, and that's how many grams? 0.5. No, on the on the one we did before. Oh, uh, the previous one. Yeah. Um, I will not answer that question now, but I have some questions on upcoming worksheets. I want to see if you can figure it out without my help first. I love that question. I think that's a great question. Huh? Uh, not for now, because I do want to make sure this video doesn't get too long. All right. So that's that. If you're watching this video at home, the answer key to this is right below the video. If you're live in person. Those green sheets are answer keys. Go ahead and get cooking. Feel free to work with each other. I'm going to go ahead and pass back those quizzes from yesterday. I love